Welcome back to the Google Guru. Today's lesson is on how to create a pivot table in a spreadsheet. Now most of you probably recognize pivot tables from Microsoft Excel. Pivot tables basically help you summarize and analyze large data sets by displaying the information in more digestible formats. So you can basically manipulate your spreadsheet of large information and take out of it the information that you need. So in order to create a spreadsheet, you're going to select all and then go to data and then go to pivot table report and as you'll see a new page will pop up with your pivot table you'll see on the right side you can set your rows columns values and filters and then underneath that you'll see update table on each change or you can manually update table I'd recommend that you leave it on update table on each change but if you're making a number of changes to your pivot table options and you don't want the spreadsheet to recalculate every time because it may slow down your browser, you may want to choose the manual option. So you're going to start off by adding rows to your pivot table. And I'm just going to do it by gender. And then for columns, I'm going to sort it by class level. What I want to see right now are the genders in each various class. So values is very important because this is where you decide exactly what numbers you want to display. So I'm going to add the field class level and as you'll see it'll come up with zeros. Now that happens because all our data set is all text and right now it's summarized by sum. You'll usually use sum and count but in this case I'm going to have to use count day because when you do that, it counts your, your data set regardless of whether or not you actually use numbers in it. So once I select that, you'll see that it'll generate the amount of students in each class sorted out by gender. Underneath that is the filter field. If you want, you can filter out certain students. So let's say one of these students is leaving in a month and I don't want to include them in the study. I would select student and then I would select the student that I wanted to not include. So I'll just select Anna and now she'll no longer be included on this list and you'll see the grand total is now 29 instead of 30 students. Now if you're used to Microsoft Excel then you're probably used to having the filter area show up above the pivot table area. So a major difference with the Google spreadsheets is that now that's on the right hand bar however there's no difference in functionality between the two of them. Now another thing that you can do on a pivot table is create a chart to see that pivot table in a graph. So all you have to do is press insert chart right above your pivot table and it'll show you a list of four recommended charts and then there's a whole list of other charts that you can choose. I'm just going to use one of the recommended charts, the column chart, and then press insert. So you can also title your chart, so I can title it class size by gender and you can move it so that it's underneath your pivot table. Also if you change any of the information on your pivot table the, the chart will automatically update. So let's say I wanted to sort it by instead of class level I chose major. So now you'll see that the chart automatically updates and shows all of the different majors on the right side. So that's going to be it for today's lesson on pivot tables. Anyone who uses Microsoft Excel should find that the pivot tables in spreadsheets are pretty comparable and, in my opinion, easier to use. It's a really great way to gather information, especially from a large data set, and I hope that you find this useful. If you have any questions, make sure to shoot me an email.